it is my absolute pleasure uh, to welcome to the stage the team behind this wonderful production. Uh, you can see in the order they come up in the order. Our director, Julian Farino, please. Uh, writer and executive producer, Stephen Butcher. <laughs> the fabulous Kelly McDonald. And executive producer, and also star of the film as well, Benedict Cumberbatch. Wherever you fancy. Whew. Welcome. Benedict, I'm going to start with you purely selfishly because that's the first time you've seen it. Yes, yes. What's your reaction? Um, <laughs> I think Julian's done a wonderful job. Um, um, I'm, I mean, as a I, it's weird watching yourself as an actor, as probably people are sick of hearing me say, but um, it never gets anything other than <laughs> slightly cringy and self-conscious and weird. But um, especially because I'm wearing half of my own wardrobe and I kind of look like I look and <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's nothing to sort of hide behind and go, ah, oh, no, there I go. Um, I'm sort of there, but um, I'm just so bowled over by everyone else's work, really. Um, David Otto superb and true to his name, wonderfully unique um, cameraman and DOP, just a, 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 in his 70s, still running around beaches after me and anyone else who moved <laughs> faster than, than, uh, than, than's normal. I mean, beautifully shot, wonderfully edited, the stunning score and all led by, by this man, Julian. Do, and do the moments feel like the moments to you? What, I mean, do the moments feel like? Yeah, do you, do you, put, um, all, do you put it all together? A, a little bit when I was I don't know about you but like when at the beginning of it all when I first started I could sort of remember every single take I sort of had that weird memory bank I've kind of got a bit fuzzy in, in <laughs> early middle age <laughs> not quite middle age as he says <laughs> got a nice laugh um, um, that's the wonderful yeah, I, thing I, of hearing those laughter you know hearing hearing that reaction and Stephen you first read this book 25 years ago if I'm, yeah, if I'm right yeah, and it's right. stuck with you obviously and then to to start and think about ad adapting it, how did that happen? Um, well, it was a phone call initially, you know, we've got this book, we'd like to adapt it. And I said yes, more or less immediately, because <laughs> I had read it 25 years ago and because the whole mood of it just does stay with you. Mm. Um, and for me, it wasn't, it wasn't about plot or anything like that. It was, it was just capturing the, the, the tone and the atmosphere that the book created and what it leaves you with when you left. And that's what I hope the film does as well. Now, that when people watch it, it kind of, it stays with them. And they think about it the next day and the next day and then in a month's time, they might have a little think about it. That, because that was, it's so important um, for me that I wanted to present it very much as a story of, of love mm. um, and compassion and everything that's wonderful about people and how they deal with, with tragedy. Um, and, and to be uplifting at the same time. So, so they were, um, that's what I wanted to get my teeth into, really. You know, I, I was sick of hearing, this is harrowing, this is harrowing. I just wanted, well, yes, of course, at the core of it is this real tragedy. But I really wanted to, to present it in, in the way that showed people um, and how wonderful and courageous people can really be. Kelly, you were really, I, I read a really lovely piece where you'd said that, you know, with a the script, when you get a script, there are, Keep, there are a couple of scenes that jump out at you going, yeah, I can get my teeth into that. But, is that me? Sorry. I think you said with this, it was the whole thing. It was, it, it was just all of it. It was all there on the page for you. Yeah, I got one of these. I don't know why. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're special. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're special. You're going to sing. I just came up with it, so that's good. Um, <laughs> I, when I met with Julian, I remember saying that, actually. I, I, every scene was something that I wanted to get my teeth into, <laughs> you know. Um, it's just so beautifully written and such a human story, and it's not... I know I've been talking about it today um, on the radio, like I was telling you earlier, and I keep being asked what the story's about, and as soon as you say what the story's about, people go, ooh, you know. Um, it sounds miserable, and it's really not. It's such a, a film of love and life and hope and being human. I think that's, that, that's, that's why it was so important to hear the laughter, you know, because it's there everywhere, you know, that, that's how we deal with it, that's what we reach for, you know, and, and you always hear of laughter in A&E departments, and fire departments, mm -hmm. police departments, yeah. stuff like that, and, it, and it's similar in everyday life. You know, the, the, the darkest moments, we find something, we find comfort 
in, in, in a fire that's within us. I think it was the one, one of the most difficult balancing acts was, was I mean, we, we were talking, which I think you've just achieved brilliantly, is this idea of how it encompasses the idea of, of parenting, childhood, adulthood, all of it, that sort of life journey, whether it's state involvement, whether it's someone who's been cheated of a child who's regressing to one, whether it's parents cheated of the experience of having a child or not cheated but losing that experience. And the sort of m manoeuvring between all of those story strands, I, I, I thought was, yeah, spot well, on. Well, I'd like to say, because what makes it for me unusual, you know, I read a lot of scripts and everything, yeah. <clears throat> was it's not a, a script or a story that seeks to move the plot forward right. every scene. It's not really narrative based at all. There aren't many plot moments. This happens, that happens. It's a series of character interactions, which is quite rare for television. You know, it's quite filmic in that regard. You really, you're just putting together all these emotional moments and that, that for, you know, that was the job in a funny way. We're always trying to judge the emotional need <laughs> of the scene. Go on. There was long scenes With your as well. Oh, no, I know, I have <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, there was, it was long scenes, and that was quite pleasurable as well. You know, there was, there was long takes. Yeah. That I, I, is as I remember. I mean, to go back to your question, that is sort of how I remember it, and especially the, the tonality of just people in situations rather than yeah. moving a plot on or some kind of thing that was always about the next event. It was about sitting in the moment with those mm. people, and that, 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 I did, that I did feel was true to what we set out to do. Mm. I watched them. It's incredibly intimate in the way that it's shot and you feel like you're with them you know the way that it's shot and the cameras you know running along the beach or mm. it's was was that quite obvious to how you wanted to capture it and and how you wanted it to look kind it of was it was very much so you know it just we talked about it being very um sort of accessible and fluid and just to be about humanity you know the thing is when you've got an ian McEwan novel and you've got benedict and you've got you know it could have been a bit Pious, like, look how serious and important a film we're making. You know, it's got grand themes and this and that. And so the style of it was always just to capture stuff, not to, you know, look at our, you know, try and make it feel self important. That was why we shot it the way we shot it. And it gave great freedom for the acting. It's a performance film, really, you know, uh, and we shot whole takes the whole time. It wasn't really broken down into lots of little moments. We were asking, you know, big things that, you know, this is the. the <laughs> I was thinking about my own role in it and, you know, for Benedict and Kelly every day they had to come and walk on and be these characters who had lost a child, which is an, a situation you can never recover from. Mm. And that's a big ordeal. And so I felt I was often playing, you know, the clown to that in a funny way because I didn't want it to be bleak and miserable the whole time. We, we all talked about it. it was a film about hope and love and all those things. That was why we, the point of going out to make it. But I wasn't the one that had to sort of draw on whatever on earth they draw on to be truthful in that. So we were, you know, all the time trying to reach for the light and I would say, like, play the mood of the moment and, and, and this and that. And it was quite unusual. And so for them to have the, the freedom, Benedict said to me before we started in rehearsal, which was a little bit scary, but he said to me, just so you know, I never do the same thing twice. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> um, I don't even remember saying that. So <laughs> <laughs> it, was a kind of, it was a good thing. Like, you know, you, it, it's scary because sometimes you need to put the pieces mm. together in a, a logical way. But on the other hand, it told me that he was going to play in the moment. He wasn't mm. going to come with a, a set idea of his performance and he was open to interaction. The, you know, the thing about the film and, and, you know, I think it's true of Stephen and Saskia in the film as well, is that chemically they feel right. And so yeah. for them to be able to play that thing of, you know, you, they walk on a met, you guys didn't really know each other, but they're you know, in a loving husband-wife relationship, they have to manufacture that. So if you give a lot of space for, act, you know, to do that, so you're not doing, oh, we'll do three, three lines here and then we'll come around and do your three lines so that they can actually play it. And that, you know, is, you know, they're very honest in the film, I think. You know, I think Stephen's here tonight as well. He deserves a round of applause. That's yeah. absolutely <laughs> The gasp in that room at, at that scene yeah. was just mm. oh, so yeah. Yeah. physical reaction to people when, when they see that. There's an amazing truth and honesty with you two on screen as well. It's just lovely and so beautiful to watch. Was that instant, you know, when you talk about having a rehearsal period and stuff and getting to that point with each other? 
for it to be like that. We rehearsed for a whole afternoon together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But I lived um, with Benedict for a year before him. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know. <laughs> um, in the cupboard. He's still in the cupboard. Brett, okay. What if I... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you... I don't know, yes. I mean, it's... It's everything that's been said before, really. You, uh, you're trying to arc for something that just breathes in the moment. You're trying to reach a point where uh, thoughts are coming uh, rather than prefabricated, where it's freshly minted and it feels uh, what the moment evolves rather than something that's preordained or has any kind of smell of... Um, uh, any kind of preparation or, in a weird way, you know. Um, so it's a bit of a tightrope walk in a way, and in another way, as far as the enormity of what we were pretending to do and, and take on, it was it, it was a, an alleviation for me of, of that. I wasn't carrying it too far in other directions and um, sort of you know boring people with it at lunch break. Um, it meant that it, it was just something to oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry, sorry, for being boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's all right. It's fine. I left myself like open for that one. I know, seriously, what's got into you? <laughs> it's just the mic refresh. Um, but, and, you know, it was that thing of kind of just letting it happen and then leaving it. Mm. Um, it and that's, that's a joyous thing to do. And, you know, when you, when you have people around you whose taste you're really in full admiration of, um, and, and, and as you said, Saskia and Stephen, who are massively talented actors, as, as was every single person in this cast. I mean, there wasn't a moment in a scene where I was feeling awkward about someone coming in and not understanding what the tonality was. Everyone was incredibly sensitive to it, brilliant at their jobs and utterly convincing in my eyes as, as to who they were trying to be. So, yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't a cakewalk, but it was made a lot easier by being surrounded by that kind of um, ability. You mentioned the tone as well, and it's quite unique, I think, in terms of the journey that you go on as an you know, watching it. And, You'd kind of be laughing one at the start of one breath, and by the end of it, you're you're kind of wiping away tears. It's so clever. I, I think what was nice there is that you know, you, it was almost there was there were times when the were laughs, and then there was you knew there was another part of a joke coming. But by that time, you'd, you'd caught hold of the laugh, and then you'd change the emotion, and then people were almost feeling guilty about wanting to laugh and stuff like that. So what it, it was, it was it's it's not often you get to watch uh, a piece that you've been involved in with an audience. Yeah. Um, and that was very rewarding, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. It's a feature film, you know, it's, it's a feature film for TV, that's what it feels like, it feels very filmic. Was it always going to be that case? Was, it always, was that always the plan? Um, uh, I think that goes back to the script, you know, it's not a manipulative script, it's an emotional piece, the mm -hmm. story you know, it's told with a spine that's really Benedict's emotional journey. That's the A to Z of it, which makes it quite filmic. And then, you know, obviously Benedict's, you know, in the, in the in, you know, nearly every scene. So you don't want to shoot everything like, here's another medium close-up of Benedict and saying this and that. And that. You know, it had to have a, a life mm. in, in that regard. Uh, as for others to say, I don't know, it was a pleasure to feel that it was filmic doing it, but someone, yeah, I, I think, think that's part of what drew me to it that. as a piece of television. Um, I, I don't think we can, the, the lines are so fine and beautifully blurred now mm -hmm. between what um, big and small screen is anymore. And I think unless you're talking about something that's episodic and therefore needs an engine of, you know, event or plot driven kind of momentum, you, you can in a single drama afford that cinematic quality that you were talking about, the sort of poetry of moving between, you know, it's about people's emotions and the truth of their interactions. And, um, and you let the camera discover that. And uh, yeah, if you, if you give it enough air and space, it can, I suppose, feel, feel cinematic. Um, but I think those terms are so sort of um, beautifully intertwined now. You, yeah. you, can't, you can't always separate cinema and television. Yeah. For you as well, taking on a role as executive producer, Mm. Um, with this as well, with um, with Sunny March, what was what was that Yay. experience like? <laughs> yeah. I'm very I'm very proud. You know, this <laughs> was um, brilliant. David Bolter um, brought this idea um, with Julia from Channel Four, and we, you know, we took it on as a script. And 
it came to it just it sort of landed as a gift and we thought this is this is so immediately there it, it felt right um and the timing was right for me uh just about and um great that you don't have that snobbery about film television you just saw a great part and you thought i i, I could do this or make this you know a lot of people build careers go oh, I, i'm now a movie star and i go and do movies and i could do more hollywood if i wanted I well it's very generous of yeah. you to say that but i mean i just think i you know Fuck it, it's acting, and it's if, if it's good material, it's good material, you know. And I don't, I don't, I don't know many people that now have a kind of snobbery about it, and I think it's their loss if they do, especially with um, this kind of offering and uh, uh, offering, I should say. But it's kind of, yeah, the, the lines are blurred, and I think the opportunity to do, do good work is, is is there in what, whatever medium, radio, television, um, or film or stage, and I think. Uh, Oh, it's so boring, that phrase, the golden era of television. It's been going on for over a decade now. But, you know, this is part of it, hopefully. And it's a continuing thing of how, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's the good work is one and the same. You did cut everyone's wages as an I did, that's producer. right. And I had a very, <laughs> yeah. I had a very big trailer yeah. and uh, I'm a yeah. chef. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, Daily Mail, if you're in it. I didn't. <laughs> so r &E doesn't work in some printed media. But, um, yeah, I, I, no, it was, you know, it was it was a joy to produce this. Going back to your question, I, I, I'm you know I'm really thrilled from and in all I mean in all um, seriousness from the look on the faces of uh, our, our brilliant makeup and, and costume department's faces when they you know had their their things their caravans whatever you would call them the, the trucks arrive and go this is fantastic the, the catering was very nice the crew said this is fantastic this is nice <laughs> um, we all got on and I think we can all be proud of, of what we set out to achieve and, and what's there. So it was a very happy experience. And, and to see something from inception to completion, well, not inception, because that was Ian McEwan and then you, mm. brilliantly. Um, but, you know, to be on board near the beginning of a project rather than being, you know, hard meat, essentially, or an empty vessel, sorry. Um, <laughs> I have to get my own back for the whole thing about it. Boing, boring at lunch. Um, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I mean, what, a, what an empty vessel. Come on. She no, saves him. What's that? She saves him. She does save him. She does more than that. But, but what I mean is, you know, it was nice to just be there just a little bit earlier mm. than the usual moment that you're involved as an actor. And, um, I, you know, it was very nice to be part of trying to make people's jobs uh, day by day, a pleasurable experience, as well as the end product be any good. So, I, I love that part. Apart from Kelly's, um, Pick up I, am, <laughs> I am waiting for my wages. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kelly, was that part of the attraction? Because she is. It's it's wonderful to see the female character be the one who's who's the stronger character, who's there to help lift him out of this fog, which then lifts them both out of this place together, and you know, be the one who's who's I, I guess the stronger one. Well, I, I think um, I think men sort of tend to be fixers. If something happens, they want to fix it and make it better. And I think that's what yeah. um, your character in the film is trying to do. And um, and, it, and it's just so heartbreaking that they can't um, work through their grief together. Mm. But what I I loved about my my story arc was um, that Julie sort of has been fixing herself by herself um, by the sea and and she steps in because she can see that he, he you know he needs her to be a man and fix it for him you know and help him in a way so yeah that was quite she nice. gives him something to do and I you know rebonds something on the piano in a, in a, in a beautiful way that enduring love it's just yeah but I think it's a very true and rueful observation uh, how men and women in this instance you know what the divide is seems to, to to make complete sense and especially i think because it happened under his watch the fact that he goes to this sort of pragmatic uh thing of trying to throw himself into the search um the finding um rather than facing the lots facing the grief the reality of it um and it, 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 it sadly makes complete sense how they drift apart because of that. Um, I think it's brilliant to have, well, not only a strong role for women, obviously, but also to have somebody, you know, as brilliant as Kelly, provide the steer for her character's guidance of, of him and 
you know, just heading off, just heading off something that could have ended in in a bleak separation, and, yeah. and beginning to understand that there is a, a life to be led within that loss that can still be fruitful and beautiful, and um, that's something extraordinary comes out of that, which is almost like a second chance. She'll she'll never go, but there's this other life that's come to be with them. Mm. Similarly, Thelma and how she is dealing with her own loss and how Saskia absolutely. just betrays that incredibly. Brilliantly. Yeah, absolutely wonderfully. So selfless and yet not weak, uh, so giving and yet not yeah. um, Of course empty. somebody's wife. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, unquestioning love. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Right, your turn. Yes, whoa, waving as well, I like it. <laughs> Jazz hands. Okay, gentlemen, right there, you can go first for that. Great scarf, by the way. You can project, can you, or do you want it? There we go. If we can get the mic to the next one as well, that'd be great. You borrow Kelly's. There we go. Um, <laughs> no, sir. A hefty, a hefty emotional ride, I must say, but fantastically acted and fantastically done, so thank you very much. Uh, my question is for Benedict and, and Kelly. Um, what did you actually take from the book? Did you delve into the book? Did you use the book for, for your, uh, that emotional ride of yours? Or, or did you very much stick to the, to the scripts? I read the book um, because I felt that would be really adult of me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, it was, it's, they're, they're two very different things. There's a lot, um, you know, there, there was chapters of the book I struggled with, if I'm very honest, like the quantum physics and everything went above my head a little, tiny bit. Um, uh, and, but it's, it's, always, it's always great if you've got the chance to, if, if something is based on a novel, to be able to read it and to take what you can. But, I mean, like I said to Julian when I first met him and talked about playing this part, I, you know, it was all there in the script. There was very little homework to be done. But you had a very clear all. instinct from the beginning. You had a, quite a, you know, you... Look very closely at the book. Oh, God, I was a like a schoolboy. Was that, yeah, I think I just yeah. sort of, oh, oh, God, here he comes again with the book. Oh, no, yeah. oh, well, set. You know, I, I, not, not like we have to serve this moment now, not at all. It was very much something I, I, I used a lot in, in development. And when we were, um, you know, talking about some changes or how to develop certain things or what we felt strongly about, including or not, in, not including. And I, yeah, I've been a McEwen fan for, for life, and, and Laura Payne, so, I mean, he's an extraordinary writer of great, profound depth, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very different beast. You have to go with the blueprint of performance rather than something other, but then I guess because a lot of it's contained in my character's, yeah, where he goes, then there are these gifts of internal truths and things that you, you don't necessarily have on the page that Stephen was delicate enough to iterate, but it's the tip of the iceberg, and then the subtext is something that comes through in a thought or a look, which sometimes was in the book, sometimes was just off the brilliance of, of what was on our script page. And so, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I did delve into it, and I read it a lot of times, but it, it was um, on the day, yes, of course, I'm working to make a scene work, and even that gets put down, and then it's about being with the people in, in, who you're in front of, and um, then it becomes a thing all of itself in that moment, really. So, yes and no. <laughs> Julian, Thank has, you. has uh, Ian seen the, the, the production? Uh, he has seen it. He came to the read-through, and he was very complimentary about Stephen's yeah. script, and then he was sent the film after we'd finished it, actually, and... and he was extremely complimentary about it, which was great for all of us. You know, right. It somehow felt important, even though we already liked it sort of thing. Uh, but it, yeah, and that's great. And I think that's really something because you know, he has a lot of his stuff adapted and, and I know he's not always the easiest you, you know, to win over. So that, that was a great thing for us. Yeah, he's been a big supporter, so Brilliant. yeah. Someone's got a microphone up there already. Yes, hello. I don't know if it works, is it on? Yeah, okay, so hi, hi. Um, to me, it was just a film about the different nuances of longing, of like joy and the pain of longing and the guilt of longing and the, you know, the love of longing. But in general, the, the film is so real in so many ways, even down to costume, Benedict. Um, um, how do you walk away from set when everything's been so raw and real and put it to bed? 
Well, there's an immediacy, I guess, about trying to find a moment that, that is there and then. And in a way, if you feel you've done that, it's usually when you're kicking yourself about feeling odd or awkward about a missed beat or something that didn't feel satisfying on the working day. Um, and like I said, it's not something you want to carry around with you a lot anyway. Um, it's a character's loss, it's not yours. So it's something that you can disassociate with uh, in a way. And you have to, you have to. You have to come with it with fresh eyes the next day as well. Um, so yeah, it's... It, it's hard though, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's mainly hard if you don't feel you've done a good day's work. If you think, oh Christ, I, that, that moment has gone, or you know, I wish I'd managed to excavate a bit more there, or did I really understand everything that I could have done in that moment with that person? You know, it's, it's more about that than, okay. than, than the profundity of what you feel in those moments. But having said that, I, I, I don't know, my, my, <laughs> my memory's getting more and more lax in these jobs, and you probably have to ask those a lot closer to me to really give you the skinny on it. But um, it, it, yeah, there were days when it was really exhausting. That school uh, day was sort of uh, where he thinks he's seen her again. Uh, was that one day? It was pretty much one day. And it was, I mean, that was, I think, about six hours of breaking down in, a, in, a class, in, a, in, a, in that office done from a lot of different angles. And it was, it was a long day. Is it harder preparing for that or shutting off from it? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, you don't really know until you're doing it, uh, as in what the cost's going to be. And I think the older I get, the more I probably do need to focus on some of that with other things as well, just how you shed that skin, how you, how you move through it to something else. Um, which doesn't contradict what I just said. It's, it's that you do feel an impact, but um, I don't feel traumatised by my work. But is it harder to prepare for it? Or I think it's just doing it, which is hard. Um, I think watching it's the hardest. Watching it's a bit weird <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, really <laughs> easy. It really is. It, you're absolutely spot on. Yeah, it is very weird because you're you're evaluating your own work and you're sort of remembering bits of it, and you know the punch of the story carries through as well. So it's all those things at once. It's a very odd experience. What's well, not odd about being an actor? <laughs> Such a powerful piece. Thank you so much. I uh, really enjoyed is the, possibly the wrong word as a parent. My um, question is to Benedict, how's the piano going? Piano? <laughs> it's going all right. I'm con I don't know if, I, yeah, I'm sort of subconsciously searching for roles where I'm supposed to be learning the piano or getting better at it. But yeah, I, I do often have projects where I'm doing that. Um, Pretty kind of flatlining at the it moment. It was really <laughs> important to you on the set. He, he spent a lot of time around between takes trying to perfect your. Yeah, I got. I did a couple of jazzier numbers. Really I, quite like the one, <laughs> I like the one you, you. I like the one when you chose the CD and your your brilliant kind of oh, kind of reaction to it which was fantastic and very real. Um, not as painful as someone learning the violin, which God knows other people have had to put up with. <laughs> Poor them. Um, but yeah, I I, I don't. Um, I don't see myself getting up on stage to do that very soon, but um, yeah, it's a wonderful instrument. I wish I was good at that. How do one prepare it to bring it out for you as well? Um, man up there with the microphone. Hello. Hello. Uh, can I ask Benedict and Kelly, how hard was it to do this part, uh, given that you both got young children yourselves? Being a parent, how? how I think I think we could have done the same job, not being parents. And great actors do. Yeah. Are parents, so. <laughs> It's a you know. It's all about imaginary circumstances. It's the same thing. You're it's you're pretending yourself into a situation, um, and so yeah, you know, the two things are very very separate. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the microphone over here. Um, just want to say thank you for an extraordinary piece of television tonight. I was and what I found was so refreshing was you didn't resort to the press conference or the big moments as you might see in things like Changeling. I was just curious to know what your what your hopes are for the program after its broadcast on Sunday, what would you, because I think it's a very cathartic work that will help parents who've lost things, but I'm just curious to know what your hopes are for the thing after this broadcast. I think when you're dealing with issues such, such as losing a child, suicide, um, breakdowns, um, uh, marital breakdowns, as well as the resurgence of hope and joy, that you would hope that people take something positive away from it. There's a responsibility, I think, as programme makers to 
offer advice and to open a helpline to anyone who's have been affected by the issues that they may have watched or be, have helped in the programme, we addressed them or move them. And it will be difficult for some people to watch, um, as well as, I hope, uh, uplifting and inspiring. Um, and as far as the life of the programme, you know, I hope, I hope it breathes on Sunday. I hope a lot of people watch it. And because of the tonality of it, because of the, the hope and the humanity of it, I hope people realise it's not just about being brought down into the depths of, of what these people experience at the worst of their um, stories, but also about the glimmer, well, the very real shining light of hope that appears on occasion. Um, Julian? Um, it's a strange story, I agree, because it's not something, you know, that you can really... It's never going to be feel-good, you know. You're mm. talking about a subject matter from which you simply cannot recover as a parent. Uh, and lots of people, you know, I remember, you know, people have seen it, people have, like, as a, you know, talk about, oh, the difficulty of watching, because everybody as a parent has been in that moment where you take your eye off your child, you know, and your life can turn like that. And I don't know, or, or you can offer, or you can hope that as people take some more generous view of humanity through it. It's about, it's about the decent side, it's about the hopeful side, it's about the loving side. Pain is everywhere, we all know that, you know, and that's, for me, in drama, I don't go ever, I'm not really ever interested in stories that are dark, because I think that's, that's life, it's enough of that. It's like, how do you somehow try and share something that has some goodness to it? That's what I think, and that's, I, I hope, the takeaway uh, from from people that see it, I think Benedict's right. The hard thing is getting an audience because would you want to see a film about uh, about a couple who have lost a, 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 had had a child uh, gone missing? Maybe not. I would be the same, frankly. And so I hope it transcends that and that people see that it's something beyond that. I mean, the story is and the elements that are in the screenplay and in the novel are a, have a higher idea. This whole. You know, it was weird, actually. In the, it was more in the cutting room, I think, than we understood when we were making it, that what became clear, that the actual spine of the story relates to the vision at the bell, where he sees his mother back in time, that then connects to the Benedict's character's inquiry about that. And the, big, the most important scene in the whole film, in my opinion, is the mother scene, which gives the bigger idea. That mm. is the child in time. That child exists somewhere, dead or alive, you know, whatever thing. And the boy that they subsequently both see, which is their child in time, you know, that became the spine. That's not, you know, that's not a story about grief. That's a much bigger yeah, idea. As the lady so said earlier, you know, the, the, you asked the, mm. the question about, it, it, it's about yearning as well. And yeah. that, there, there's great pain in that, but there's also great hope. Great, great hope. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do we have a microphone over this side now? Oh, we've got one here. Hello. Sorry. Thank you. It's a beautiful piece. Um, Benedict, you used the phrase or word excavate um, to find him. How do you excavate from project to project? And also, Julian, how, how do you work with an actor who does something different every time and what, what changes take to take for... I'm for rolling his eyes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um... It's very different for every job. We'd be here for a long time if I went. <laughs> it's very different. Well, I hate to be... It's, it's the same as I said to Julian. I like to try and offer up... Um, if you trust the director... Well, I've always trusted my director. So I've always offered, I've always offered up options. I, 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 it's not because I can't sit still in a repeated mode of delivery. There's certain technical requirements for a lot of work that I've done which needed that on the mark specificity and accuracy and, and detail and, and in repetition. And there are some projects that don't that have something where you can afford to lose yourself to moment by moment reinvention or just rethinking or playing a different intention uh, or thought process in that in that given instance. And as far as excavating for different characters, I mean, it's it's so wildly different. And I try to make it that way with what I've done uh, and, and hope to do. That um, you know, research uh, the book. Um, Sitting, sitting in those emotions, um, uh, rehearsing with the actors, um, learning my lines and, and turning up to do an honest day's work. That's, that's kind of how you get there. Um, beyond that, if I start talking about how I excavate minute by minute or in a moment of extreme emotion, I feel that I'd be doing myself a disservice in a way to sort of to go there. Um, 
It's just sometimes what happens, and I can't. You know, it's not. It's difficult to verbalise. Um, it's a little bit beyond. For me, there's the, the, the two great scenes I would talk about with these two in there. Like ben, the, one of the scenes that I never expected to be most moved by, but every time I see it, I am. It's Benedict's scene in the second committee room where he talks about you know child literacy and whatever, and it suddenly becomes very personal. I find that deeply moving. You can't really direct that kind of scene. You kind of know that you read it, and it's well written because. It, it's something that dawns on him in the room, da, da, but we never spoke about that. That's just something that you can do. And actually, the takes are they're, they're quite different, whatever. And that was just the one that nailed the one that nailed it. Kelly listening to the tape that somebody mentioned, mm. uh, the CD of the thing. You can't buy that. That's just that's you know my job. I'm there to calibrate what I believe the moments to be. You know, I think for this scene, it needs that kind of quality because that's our stepping stone emotionally. But then, you know. Kelly listening to that, it's pure magic, and that's the mystery of acting, the beautiful mystery of acting. It's like sometimes you just know, it's usually, you know, Stephen and I have talked about the script a million times. He's written, rewritten it a million times. I've read it and I've planned it and all that a million times. And then somebody just does something, and it's just much better than you think. And honestly, that is the experience of working with great actors, and that's the beauty of it, is it's somehow like, and, and it, it's, uh, it's very uplifting, that kind of thing. I don't even know. Kelly's quite instinctive by process. You kind of know when you know. You're intuitive. But then it brings a lot of brain power to something and analyzes this, that, and the other, and then to can toss, and thankfully can toss it out. <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> He's the homework. Put the book down. The process is always different, but somehow... Yeah, uh, I, I think out loud yeah. a lot more than is sometimes healthy, but it, you know, it is, it's, I think we both... I don't mean that rudely. I just off. think everybody's process feels is good at the yeah. end, though. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's, it has to yeah. come down to that. I think we've probably got time for two more questions. If someone's got a microphone already. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thank you all for such a moving piece, and I think it will stay with me for, for quite some weeks. Be thinking about it. Um, I just wanted to ask. I know we've said that the story wasn't necessarily about plot prog progression or giving the audience answers, but to develop your characters as actors, did you have to come up with a working theory about what had happened to Kate? Did that ever enter your mind? I can't remember. Yeah, no, I I didn't feel the need. Um, like I, I'm sort of repeating myself, but you know, each scene sort of stood alone for me as a um, as a lovely piece, almost like you know, theatre writing, and um, and then when you put put it all together, it all it all works. I didn't I didn't overthink it. I, th I think uh, no, I do think about it. Um, I think. Exactly that, and also f f what he says in the piece, which is that he believes that there is... Anyone who's experienced grief knows that there is an absence, but there's also a remaining presence. And that, in a way, is, I think, furthered. Of course, the idea that he will one day actually find her, it's, it's, it's the thing that tortures him, and in that instance where he thinks he has, I think that's when he finally, finally grieves that that won't happen in a way, but that she will somehow always be out there. And I do, I, you know, I know that sounds really... I think they have to be... <sighs> Stephen and Julie have to be careful with each other as well because they're, they're taking care of each other. Yeah. And there's the fish tank scene. It's the first time that they, they raise the question of, is she alive? Yeah. And it's probably the first time they've ever said that to each other. Mm. Um, so it's, it's choosing moments as well as when is someone strong enough to hear a possible truth. Yeah. Um, and for me, there, that it's, you know, it was a really important scene. It was the, that they were aliens in a different world, in their own world, and only to each other in that alien world can they say the hard question of, do you still believe that she's alive? Um, and thankfully, you know, neither of them do. Thankfully, both of them have hope, and then they can feed off, off each other, really. So, you know, I, I think the characters themselves um, have to be mindful of each other and not... And almost be afraid in front of each other. I mean, separately, they may think the worst, you know, mm. of, of what's what she's been taken, is she abducted, is it is it this, you know, everything. But I think together they, they have to be, there's that care, there's that duty of care still. Mm. And I think that and always happens. I think every, every thought has passed through our minds at the stage that we're having those conversations, the very worst and the very most optimistic. So it should be whatever we're saying should, should con contain that behind us um, and within us. 
And it's what, like Stephen says, is what two people can bear to tell each other who love each other and want to hold on to that love and that love for that absent life. Um, so no, no specific theory, no. but just probably thinking every theory. Julie, when you were shooting it, did you, did you shoot all the stuff um, with Kate before? And then... Or, it was or, the usual random yeah. mishmash. We're doing the beginning and then we're doing the end and yeah. then we're doing a bit of the middle and then another <laughs> bit and trying to remember where we were and everything. Mm. I mean, to be honest, you know, one of those gambles in the, you know, to, to work with a four-year-old is really difficult because they're not really learning lines or, you know, it's just a state of being. And we were lucky that Beatrice was so good, I think, you know, because people tend to get moved when they see her on screen because it's, she's, she's real. And a lot of that was down to Benedict. He was fantastic with her off camera. He spent tons of time playing with her. She was totally besotted with you, wasn't she? <laughs> and, and, and it was a great thing for the film. I did nothing. I stood back <laughs> and allowed that to happen. And then, you know, most of those moments are not, ex even, you know, you seem was clever enough to write short bursts for her. Some of those are sort of yeah. improvised, aren't they? They're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just trying to capture an energy. That laugh in the trolley. Oh, that's yeah. brilliant. That was, her, that was yeah. her all the time. Wow. All the time. She was, I mean, you know, that, that's here. something for nothing, you know, when you have that much presence in life to feel that silence, that void, the little yellow coat not hanging up on the peg, one toothbrush in the, in the cup, and just the emptiness of, uh, of a place that's had her life in it. That was, uh, so even moving sometimes, and we, we did shoot out of sequence, and there were days, thankfully, where there were moments of her of Beatrice and everything she brought to the set and just she lit everyone up. Mm. And, uh, and without her to go there and imagine losing that as your own, it was, uh, it was yeah, it was, it was part of it. It was part of what got me there. Last question, I'm already sorry. And you have a microphone. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, thank you so much for doing this. I was just wondering, um, for Kelly and Benedict, if there were a, if there was a scene that you found particularly difficult to act in um, that perhaps you weren't expecting to find very difficult? We had most enjoyed as well into that, so we can get both of those. Um. <laughs> I don't, I, I mean, first days are always a bit traumatizing, so I find that. Our last day was quite <laughs> I was at my booze it, press. Last the, it was after, yeah. after the rap part, okay. basically. We, then, yeah, then yeah. we did the, the, sort of the lure scene, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> at one point, Benedict said, and that is the deepest breath Kelly has taken on. <laughs> 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 like, no lit flames. Yeah, yeah exactly. She would have exploded had there been a match run. Yeah, it was, um, though, yeah, those, that's always difficult. That's always weird and difficult, but... You know, again, when you've got someone as brilliant as Kelly and someone you trust, you just kind of go into it and giggle. <laughs> Nothing seemed difficult. I mean, no. it was all... Didn't. That, that's the thing. The subject of the film, this, this awful event happened, but um, the, the scenes themselves aren't about that, no. and, and it, they were always really joyous, sounds kind of pretentious, but, you know, they were, they were a pleasure to do, there wasn't anything. It was hell. Which yeah. <laughs> 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 scene did you find most difficult? Sorry? Was there a scene for you that was most difficult? Uh, <laughs> uh, only, I only remember schedule pressures. We had to shoot the supermarket scene we could we didn't oh, have enough money. We didn't have enough money really to hard. we didn't have enough money to buy them out. So the supermarket yeah. was open at eleven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we started at six thirty, which was as early as we could start, and we, you know, we uh, had to do um, uh, the whole interior scene, which is obviously really important. And I love that scene because when I watch it, it was take one. In fact, do you remember? And we didn't really know what we were doing. And it's one unbroken take. And I think Benedict's performance in that is unbelievable because you see the growing panic of his discovery that Kate is not there. And I remember shooting, we shot quite a bit afterwards, mm. didn't we, you know, as you do, uh, the coverage. Uh, but it was, what, you know, so there are certain days when you see a schedule ahead, they're always like, oof, the day from hell, you know, and it's usually just practical purposes. There was nothing performance-wise. You know, every day was kind of intense. And every day, I never did anything where every single take seemed to require judgment. It wasn't mm. like one, they had almost no scenes of like, we'll knock this one out. And I don't mean to be rude about everything, but sometimes you feel, mm. oh, I know that, you know. Yeah. And this one, it just seemed to be a lot of calibration, more than 
uh, anything I've ever done. Uh, the supermarket was, I mean, you know, the supermarket was, the people in it were ours, outside was not. Yeah. And By the end scene, yeah. we literally had 10 minutes, didn't we? And it there was, were people all it was, over. It was really difficult. It was very difficult safety. to carry. Had, when you had to run with Beatrice yeah. on that thing, People who had already told us you've got to get out of here. Yeah. We did it, Grinness. You can't time, do that with members of the well, we public. Oh, in there. oh, look, we're doing a take. Yeah. 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 Um, but the yeah, running outside into a busy street and people going, "Can I have a selfie?" <laughs> it, yeah. Literally, literally. In the, in the, yeah. In the, um, yeah. In the scene with what we, you know, that we we we, we used uh, in the cut. I mean, um, w was hard. That was difficult, you know. And it's very weird. And you're you having to act to... that you've just lost your child. Yeah. 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 Uh, not now, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> go away. <laughs> please, please go away. On quite a lot of the rushes, you hear people saying off camera, Benedict, Benedict, you know, the, quite, when Benedict's actually playing scenes in all the exterior London stuff. When you crossed from Embankment Tube as well, was that, did, was that all closed off or was that? Uh, no, tube. well, the long walk with the brilliant Anna Maidley, who, again, another wonderful performance. Um, she, uh, yeah, it, that was, that got pretty weird. That was like street theatre and like other <laughs> things I've done. But I mean, that was literally like, yeah, oh, the Thames, boats, water, normalness. And then, oh, 500 fucking people <laughs> all with their cameras out. You know, that, that's, that's, that's odd. That's just it now. That's part of the gig, I suppose. Yeah. It's, it's good in a way because it really... <laughs> you, you can't muck around. Uh, you know, I've gone through stages of my life um, and, and one of the biggest self-criticisms and the things I've tried to develop is concentration. You, you have no room not to concentrate. You have to be completely absorbed in your task in the present tense to be able to, to do that with any kind of, uh, yeah, with, with any kind of uh, commitment. So you just you have to block it out in a weird way. It's like the more noise there is there, the harder you have to work to cut that and mm. get into the place that you're actually supposed to be for that moment, so, yeah. It's helpful. I, you have to, you have to, well, because it's a reality, <laughs> I have to pretend it is. Yeah. It's not, but it, <laughs> yeah. I, I pretend it is. Um, we've run out of time, I'm afraid. Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. Share Pleasure. your stories and Pleasure thank you for, for your attention and your wonderful questions. <laughs>